to actively manage the Western Springs Native Forest Significant Ecological Area, respecting the senescence of the pines. We believe that it is a wonderful opportunity for the community and council to overcome their differences to work together on an innovative urban ecology restoration project. The methodologies so far proposed are entirely focused on total pine forest removal in one operation with inevitable destruction to the closed canopy 50 plus year old native forest underneath, which has never been surveyed. No other methodology has been proposed or considered other than to be dismissed. Council proposes to landscape a native forest after destroying the pine forest and the majority of the native forest SEA. In fact, this methodology is much in evidence across Auckland with the Tapunamunga Authority. However, this proposed methodology is not supported by the experts in the field at Waikato University. I have attached to my submissions, which you all have a copy of, a paper by Curie Joy Wallace and Professor Bruce Clarkson, Urban Forest Restoration Ecology, a review from Hamilton, New Zealand, published in the Journal of the Royal Society of New Zealand on the 3rd of July, 2019. And I'm quoting from that report. Urban forests are distinctly different from rural forests, both ecologically and environmentally. They are more dynamic than rural forests. Planted urban forests require intensive management to return to a functional native state. Urban restoration ecology is a young, growing scientific field in New Zealand, and research in Hamilton has been occurring for about two decades. We have found that the underpinnings of urban forest restoration must be scientific to ensure success, because little is known about either reconstruction of the forest from scratch or restoration of degraded forest patches. Urban forest restoration by trial and error is costly, and resulting failures are both discouraging to practitioners and condemning of future funding approval. This paper sets out what is required to grow a functional native forest. <coughs> it is fair to say that the Western Springs plant, re, plant, planting plan does not follow the kind of scientific approach that will ensure restoration of the ecology of the current forest significant ecological area. At best, it is a landscaping plan, much like the sad bullock track plantings. Our council declared a climate crisis last year. Niwa is telling us to expect hotter summers. This summer we have seen droughts throughout the country, including in Auckland, and still no end to them. This summer has also seen the failure of many of council's planting and an almost total failure for the Tupunamunga authorities replanting on its munga. Thousands of ratepayer dollars have been wasted. Recently, I spoke with Kit Howden of Friends of Mungafar, who told me that as we are now in the Anthropocene epoch, the way we manage our environment had to change. He was expecting council to lose almost all their plantings this summer. I have also been making submissions at the Watercare Huia Treatment Plant Resource Consent Hearing, and I would like to leave you with a quote from one of the experts, Dr. Kate McInnes Ng, Associate Professor at the School of Biological Sciences, University of Auckland. She measures and models carbon and water cycling in forests. In particular, she has studied the effects of global change processes like climate change and land use change on forests and other vegetation. In her expert report for the Save the Kauri Trust, she says, under a climate emergency, all effort should be made to protect established forests for the rich carbon reserves they store both above and below ground. 
Established forests are better placed to survive drought because they have deep rooted systems to access deep water stores. Seedlings and saplings do not have adequate root structures to allow them to survive dry periods. Under the current drought conditions, we are seeing restoration plantings completely fail across the city because the developing soil moisture deficit is killing sensitive seedlings. As droughts are predicted to become more frequent and severe, we cannot predict if an offset planting will survive to a mature age. If the life force of this forest is destroyed, the life force of everything, the eels, Motions Creek, the whole park will be harmed because they are all connected. Not all is the interconnectedness of the whole park recognized. Not only is the interconnectedness of the whole park recognized by our indigenous peoples, it is also recognized in the 1995 Western Springs Lakeside Plan. So to reiterate, I believe this is a wonderful opportunity for the community and council to overcome their differences, to work together on an innovative urban ecology restoration project which respects the senescing pines and with skilled arbicultural management oversees the succession of the forest to a native podocarp forest. I encourage you to make your decision along these lines. Steve? Kia ora. Uh, kia ora koutou My name is Steve Abel. I'm speaking as uh, Secretary for the Society of the Protection of the Western Springs Forest. I emailed you all uh, an alternative transition plan. I've got a hard copies of that if people would like them. Um, shall I pass them on? Um, Steve, and what you've to me? Yes. Yeah, and also, just while I remember, Deborah has uh, emailed a, a table showing that the non pack areas, the non isolated areas, have just as much ecological diversity in them. That got sent to you this morning. I'd like to table that if I may. So, as a starting point uh, regarding the forest, we agree, we agree on some key things is that we, we all want to see a thriving native forest. We all want to see the track opened and public access restored as soon as possible, and we all want safety for forest users. However, there have been some uh, no actual consideration of a plan B for how the forest could be managed other than by the full stand felling. If we put a pause on the current plan, for this season only, we could set up a working group that could include mana whenua who wish to be part of it the local residents, the biodiversity team at Auckland Council, and independent arborists who could work out a plan B, so that you as a local board have an opportunity to actually choose between something developed with the community and what you already have on the table. And vote on that by the end of this year, potentially. Whatever is decided upon could be implemented from early 2021. The residents at the end of Westview Road were flung into this by a sudden advent of an emergency removal of 13 trees adjacent to their homes in late 2018. They were supposedly in imminent danger of failure. These people had their lives turned upside down, to be honest, and they didn't trust that actually the assessment was correct because they lived beside these trees for many years. We got other arborists to look, and they said there was no danger. I appreciate... Uh, Pippa Coombs, former chair, acknowledging in her uh, talk a couple of weeks ago that there have been failings around the process and particularly around the emergency removal that could have been done better. Well, the basis for those 13 emergency trees is exactly the same as the basis for the removal of the whole stand that you have before you today. It is Gerald Collett's cursory eyeballing and rough notes. It's simply not correct advice. This whole plan is built on a foundation of sand. It was not correct regarding the 13 emergency trees that were supposedly an imminent risk of failure, all of which are still standing now 14 months later. In the conferencing, the expert conferencing during mediation, Collett conceded with the other four expert arborists that none of the assessed trees met the requirement for emergency tree works and more detailed assessment was required. That more detailed assessment has never been done. In fact, we the community have done more thorough assessments than the council has. And those confirm that there is no need to cut the stand down on safety grounds. There is, this plan is built on a foundation of sand. There is a credibility issue for you 
you need to do the industry standard assessment, industry standard assessment, fix that credibility. Listen to the community and do the consultation. As a board, you need to be able to say to your officials that there needs to be a high level of professionalism and respect to the community who have rightly pointed out the errors in the process so far, and those errors have not been repaired. You are presented with only one plan, and that is all that we as a community have ever been presented with. We have never been offered an opportunity to develop a plan B based on other ways of managing this forest for safety, for access and for ecological restoration. So what I'm asking you to do today is to please make the time to come up with that plan B. Just as we as a community have a right to have a say in how this occurs, you too as board members have a right to have the opportunity to choose between a plan A and a plan B. If we bulldoze the current plan through, as I'm sure you'll be told needs to happen today by my friend Rod Sheridan, with whom I have quite a good relationship, believe it or not, <laughs> you risk sowing the seeds of lasting community resentment. What we want to be doing is sowing the seeds of community cooperation. And we genuinely want to be doing that. You have this consented plan, put it aside, let's work out a plan B. If for no other reason than for the sake of the relationships with your community as a local board. And then you get to make the actual choice in some months from now. And then we can no longer say that we weren't heard, that there wasn't a plan B on the table. We can no longer say that you didn't listen to us. Got a coat to cut Any questions? Let's not all move that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.